Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Big Bubble Focaccia. That's right, I like big bubbles and I cannot lie, which is why I was so excited to try something called high hydration focaccia, which simply means the dough has a lot of water. In fact, this was the most water any dough has ever had in a Food Wishes video, right? We're talking like 80%. So it ended up being a wet and wild ride. And I hope you have as much fun watching this as I had making it. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with a very simple no knead dough, which begins by stirring just a quarter teaspoon of dry active yeast into some bread flour. Oh yeah, one of the advantages of no knead dough, besides you don't have to knead it, is that we only have to use a little bit of yeast. And then once that's stirred in, we'll go ahead and add some salt, as well as a little bit of olive oil. And then last but not least, some room temperature water. And then what we'll do is grab a wooden spoon or some other sturdy stirring utensil and we will mix this for a couple minutes to form a very wet, very sticky dough. And yes, we're going to have to make you measure all these ingredients on a digital scale. Since for 500 grams of bread flour, we're going to want exactly 400 grams of water, which if you do the math gives us an 80% hydration for the dough. Also known as super wet, impossible to knead dough. But don't worry, as the name of the dough indicates, we're not going to knead this. Okay, all we're going to do once that's stirred up is clean off our spoon and scrape down the bowl. And then we'll just cover this and leave it on the counter overnight. And we'll let it sit just like that for about 12 to 14 hours. At which point, if everything goes according to plan, it should look something like this. And other than a few on the surface, you're not gonna notice a lot of bubbles at this point. But what you will notice is a very, very elastic dough. And what we'll do at this point, with the help of our flexible white bench scraper, is transfer this onto our work surface but not before it's rubbed with a generous amount of olive oil, which is gonna prevent it from sticking. Since this dough is so wet, not even flour would help us with that. And if we added enough where it would, we would have added too much flour. But anyway, once that surface is oiled, we'll go ahead and transfer our dough on top, and then we'll generously olive oil our hands, at which point we'll begin to press and push and stretch this dough into a rectangle, approximately 16 by 12 inches in size. All right, give or take. All right, big bubble focaccia is not an exact science, so just get it close. That's all we ever ask. And yes, in case you're wondering, it is super fun to stretch dough like this. And the sensation is very hard to describe, so you're gonna have to try it yourself. And then what we'll do once we do have that stretched out into a rectangle, is we will fold it over in thirds like this. All right, first one side, and then the other side over like this. And then we'll do the exact same thing with the other side just like we're folding up some laundry, only completely different. And then what we'll do once our folds are complete is use our bench scraper to bring in any loose bits of dough. And then we will transfer this smooth side up onto a very generously olive oil tray or pan. And do not be shy with the olive oil. And once we have that dough centered, we will cover it with some oiled plastic wrap and we will let this rest for one hour, during which time it's probably gonna almost double in size and it might very well look a little something like this. And what we'll do is remove the plastic, and then we'll do another series of folds, only this time right on the pan. Oh, and don't forget to olive oil your hands generously. Okay, we really can't work too much oil into this dough. And I guess officially we're trying to stretch and fold this in thirds, but I don't think that's as big of a deal as just somehow getting it folded one way and then the other. And the reason we're doing this is to build up some beautiful gluten structure so that later, once this bakes up, it's gonna have those big, beautiful bubbles as advertised. But anyway, we'll fold that dough as shown and then turn it and fold it the long way as well. And eventually we will wrestle that with the smooth side up. And then once more, we will top it with some oiled plastic and we will let it sit for another hour. All right, I hope you weren't in a hurry for this since this is pretty much gonna take all day, but it will be totally worth it, at least according to me. So we will cover that and let it rest for another hour at which point we'll unwrap it. And yes, you guessed it. We will give it another folding. And yes, this is the last one. And again, I'll remind you, put lots of oil on your fingers. All right, I probably could have used more myself. And for this last fold, forget about thirds or quarters or halves. Just stretch and fold over one end and then stretch and fold over the opposite end and then turn it and do the same thing to the other two sides. And as awesome as this dough felt earlier when we were stretching it, by this point, it feels even more magnificent. And it's almost impossible not to be smiling while you're doing this. All right, you'll see. 
And that's it. Once we have those final folds finished, we will go ahead and pick this up and transfer it smooth side up into a very, very generously oiled baking pan. And I'm using my Detroit pizza pan, but any similarly sized baking dish or pan will work. And while I do prefer metal, it doesn't have to be. Or right, something like a ceramic casserole dish would also work. And once that dough's been transferred in, we'll go ahead and drizzle over some olive oil, and then we will push and press this out to the edges of the pan, which because of how elastic this dough is, is gonna take you a few minutes. And if it keeps pulling back and refuses to stretch out to the edges, just let it rest for a minute or two and then continue on. But eventually with enough stretching and pressing, you should be able to get it almost all the way to the edge, if not all the way to the edge. At which point finally, we are ready to bake this in two more hours. No, I'm not kidding. We are gonna cover that up and let it sit for a couple more hours, during which time it will continue to ferment and form bubbles and do whatever high hydration doughs do. And after two hours, I uncovered mine and it looked like this. And we are finally, for real, ready to bake it. And before we do, because this is a focaccia, we're supposed to take some nice oily fingers and poke holes in the top to give it that signature focaccia appearance. Except as you can see, this dough was so wet and so sticky, this poking had almost no effect. And because I had never done this before, I was wondering if I had screwed it up and I wasn't sure if these were gonna have any effect. And who knows, maybe they don't. And when you do yours, you could possibly skip this step. But anyway, that's up to you. I mean, you are after all the panettiera of poking the area. But anyway, after that possibly futile attempt, I went ahead and scattered over some freshly chopped rosemary, which as you know is very traditional for focaccia. And then I finished up with a sprinkling of some very coarse sea salt. And that's it. About a day and a half after I started, this was now ready to transfer into the center of a 425 degree oven for about 30 minutes, or until beautifully browned and looking like this. So the outside looked okay, but I had no clue what it was gonna look like on the inside. Although I was very hopeful. Okay, I always am. And then what I did is let this cool in the pan for about 10 minutes before removing it to a cooling rack where we need to let it cool down all the way to room temp before we cut it, or at least we're supposed to. So that's exactly what I did. And once cooled, I transferred it to a cutting board and I grabbed a knife and sliced in. And when I pulled those two pieces apart and looked at that crumb structure inside, I could not have been happier with what I saw because what I saw were big bubbles, and lots of them, which apparently is one of the big benefits of a high hydration dough. But of course, who cares what it looks like if it doesn't taste and feel good? So I cut a piece for the official taste test, and I bit into what was not exactly like focaccia, or at least the focaccia I know, but the texture I thought was much closer to ciabatta bread, which makes sense since that's sort of a high hydration dough also, but it was richer, since we did work in a good amount of olive oil. And all in all, I was very pleased with the results. And I could relax knowing that all that time and effort were totally, totally worth it. Allegedly. But anyway, all kidding aside, the one big advantage of bread that does have a very long fermentation time is that they just taste better. Okay, you could take the exact same ingredients and use a full packet of yeast and have that bread in the oven within a couple hours. But it would not have that same beautiful bubbly texture or what I think is a far superior flavor. So it's true, the longer a bread takes to make, the better it is. And that's our story and we're sticking to it. But anyway, once I did that initial taste test, I decided to take another piece and split it down the middle and then make a sandwich with it using a couple nice slices of prosciutto. And despite creating what is the world's most minimalist sandwich, that really was phenomenal. And it reminded me of traveling through Italy and ordering sandwiches and asking if I could have tomato and lettuce on it, and them looking at me like I was from another planet, or America. But anyway, the point is this stuff would make amazing sandwiches, either fresh like this or toasted. And of course, besides looking super cool and feeling really good in your mouth, the nice thing about all those big bubbles is that they do an amazing job of soaking things up. Like for example, this balsamic vinegar and olive oil and tomato mixture. Okay, as far as breads and dips go, it really doesn't get any better than that. But anyway, that's it. What I'm calling Big Bubble Focaccia, because I don't think the name High Hydration Focaccia has the same ring to it. Sure, it took a long time, 
but there really wasn't that much actual work involved. And it really was a lot of fun. And of course, delicious to eat. Which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.